Welcome to another Getting There series. My name is Clinton Normore. I'm the Associate Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion at A.T. Steele University. I am here with Chamaka, who is a fantastic student at the Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine and President of the Student National Association. First of all, let me talk to you about A.T. Steele University. We're a comprehensive graduate health sciences institution. We have six schools and more than 24 programs. We have not only the Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine, we have the Arizona School of Osteopathic Medicine, we have the Arizona School of Dentistry and Oral Health, the Missouri School of Dentistry and Oral Health, the Arizona School of Health Sciences, and the College of Graduate Health Studies. Undoubtedly, if you take a look at our website, and I'll have it here on the screen for you, it's www.atsu.edu forward slash diversity. Again, that's www atsu.edu forward slash diversity. Visit our website uh, after the webinar, learn more about what we have to offer and how you can be the light of hope you wish to see in the world. So Chong, tell us a little bit about you and, and how you chose AT Steel University. So I, I was born in Nigeria, but I grew up in Colorado. I went to college in Minnesota and I've lived in Missouri for four years. I chose to come to ATSU due to some mentorship that I received during my gap year in Columbia, Missouri. The physician I shadow was a DO who had attended ATSU, and she had a manipulative medicine clinic that she, she only practiced um, OMM. Spending time shadowing her, seeing how she affected her patients' lives, um, that was definitely something that I, I thought that I wanted to do in my future, was another additional skill that I wanted to have in my training as a physician and knowing that ATSU was the very first um, osteopathic school was very encouraging and definitely why I chose to apply there. So how did you come to learn about osteopathic medicine? So I came to learn about osteopathic medicine just trying to, through like the process of trying to figure out what type of physician I wanted to be, mm -hmm. um, shadowing Dr. Kaufman at Columbia and learn about what actually it meant to be to do manipulative medicine and how you can impact your patient's life through manipulative medicine was huge in, in me learning a lot about osteopathic medicine and how I could incorporate that into my future practice. Okay. I've gotten to know you over the past couple of years because you're also a, a GPS scholarship, so a graduate health profession scholarship recipient that is uh, facilitated out of the diversity department. Tell us a little bit about that experience and how important it is to uh, your academic success. As a graduate professional scholar, the very first month um, of the scholars program, we took a course on healthcare inequities. Um, and during that time, I learned so much about the healthcare disparities. I learned so much information um, about like different facets of medicine and different facets of individuals that are underserved. And even though I knew that I wanted to go into underserved medicine and helping those that look like me, um, I didn't actually fully understand what that entailed until I was accepted and I took that course for GPS scholars program. And so um, that's really what GPS has taught, done for me. It has helped me to realize more about the healthcare inequities and has pushed me towards working more with the underserved population. You know, another thing that I've, I've come to uh, really value uh, my opportunity to get to know you is, is I've learned just how committed you are to your profession, your craft, and actually getting there. And I know the, you're a leader, you're a campus leader, so you have a tremendous amount of burden with regard to time that's uh, dedicated to other endeavors just to, to forward the university, to create opportunity access for uh, people who look like you. And you've always been a fantastic student. How can you manage to do all that you do and still do extremely well uh, in your program? I think it's because of the support network that I have. My family, my friends, even faculty at ATSU and the mentorship that I've got, received. Medical school, it, it's not a solitary thing. You can't do it all alone. You need, you need support. And I'm very fortunate to have the support network that I that I do have. Um, my sister is a physician. If I'm having trouble with something, I can call her and she'll she'll be like, okay, Chamaka, it's not that hard. I'll talk you through this. But like just having 
so many people in my corner has definitely helped me in my pursuits. And you know, uh, you, you speak about your sister and having that resource and other networks. And, and as you know, uh, the challenge with regard to healthcare disparities also resides in the fact that populations of color don't have access uh, to people in their, their uh, families mm -hmm. who have traversed the uh, medical profession or any other allied health profession. Uh, but that doesn't mean you haven't overcome challenges. Oh, sure. uh, not, not only have you witnessed your sister overcome challenges. So speak to a prospective student, because typically that's who's watching these webinars, uh, and give them one piece of advice that they would need to take hold to, to overcome challenges that might exist throughout their education uh, trajectory. I think the biggest thing I can speak to for a prospective student is don't doubt yourself. Don't let other people tell you you can't do what you want to do. If you have the will, there is a way. You have so many people that you can contact. If you're interested in um, osteopathic medicine, you can contact Quentin, contact <laughs> me, and we'll definitely like get you through the process because, as I mentioned before, it is not a solitary process. You absolutely need someone in your corner. You need multiple people in your corner. and. Just don't let anyone tell you you can't do what you want to do. Chamaka, thank you so much uh, for that advice, for your time, talent, and your wisdom, uh, because you are the light of hope that I wish to see in the world. And uh, though you stand on shoulders, great shoulders, you too have great shoulders uh, that people can stand on, and you've just given the opportunity for them to reach out to you. So thank you for that very much. Thank you. Okay. As Chamaka mentioned, there is opportunity and there are access points, uh, one of which is through our website in which you can access at www.atsu.edu forward slash diversity. And through there, you can reach students like Chamaka uh, who will be more than happy to provide advice uh, as well as myself uh, and other faculty and staff on campus. So don't let doubt be the challenge that keeps you from being the light of hope you wish to see in the world. These series are about getting there. You're speaking with someone who is getting there, who's already accomplished so much and has so much more in store for our society. We want you to have those same opportunities, which is why we're doing this. Uh, we'd love to see you on our campus uh, at some point, if not our campus, any campus, because you are the hope that we wish to see in the world.